everyone welcome back to my channel i am going to try some uh spackle and add some textures to my pieces and so i will go ahead and show you what i'm going to be working on and if you haven't subscribed yet click the subscribe button to see more of my journey in art so let's get to the canvas shall we canvas. I have a six ounce spackling jug that I've had and this is the second time I'm doing texture so I decided to try out the joint compound where it goes on wet as the color pink and then it dries off white. I'm not sure I'm gonna like this but this is a 32 ounce jug versus a 16 ounce jug of the spackle. I'm gonna try both of them out and see which one I like better. And then I have, which everything I'm using will be in the link below. These are square notches and they all have different sizes. And I figured, well, the biggest size right there is one fourth or six millimeters. And then the tiniest one is one sixteenth or two millimeters. And I really like the opportunity that you get with each size. Now that is one fourth by one eighth. And then you've got the one uh, the one eight also and that size is again the one fourth by one eight and of course the smallest one at one sixteenth at two millimeters and they're all different sizes and I'm really glad I got those now I wanted two because I could put them on top of each other and I can make them longer now they don't intersect with each other like a puzzle so you would have to put it on top of each other a little bit overlapping and in the center of your design would be a little bit thicker of your design but if that doesn't bother you you can use two of them to make it longer so that was my plan since i didn't find what i was looking for so let's go ahead and open the joint compound and again i said that this is wet when it's wet well it doesn't even look wet but the consistency is pink. And then when it completely dries, it'll turn off white. So I'm having a difficulty opening this right now. And I got it off of there. And as you can see, it looks like cotton candy, but it looks like glob. Pretty much stays and put in the container. So these are different items I might use. I might use my, um, palette knife you can use a comb and then your two putting knives and then I found this in my stuff I might use this um, to put the compound over it and to use it just as a texture piece design I'm not sure and then a scraper a food scraper so who knows I might use some of those but for right now let's just take the uh, putty knife and just spread this over. Now I really like the consistency of this. How I can explain it, it's like frosting. It's not that thick. It moves well and it's just really smooth. Now when I did my research on what the difference between joint compound and the spackle, as I was reading and as I was reading what other people were saying, the difference was is that joint compound is made of different sands and it's more grittier. I did not find that as the case. Now it might be with the dry joint compound where you have to add water or do whatever you want to, but the ready-made is extremely smooth. It is lighter and fluffier versus the spackling um, is a little bit more thicker and I actually had to add water to my spackle when I first did it uh, just to uh, get it to, to be the consistency that I wanted it. Uh, it wasn't runny or anything but I really enjoy the consistency of the 
the joint compound. Now, I'm not sure if I like this going on wet pink. I think it's messing with my eyes a little bit because for right now, I am just trying to get the compound onto the canvas. Now, it took me approximately 30 minutes to actually finish my design. I did it a couple times and I'll show you. A couple, I think three times. And the compound was drying, but you could still manipulate it as it was drying. So it was, that was a pretty cool thing. Um, like I said, the, the pink was messing with my eyes because it's like you see what it might look like, but you don't see the final product until it's done. So if you don't like it when it's, when it's drying in the color pink, then you're probably not, you know, you're not gonna like it when it's dried. So I was not sure if I was going to like, you know, I first thought I would like having it pink because I wanted to see the, the time that it would take me to do the painting and see the time, uh, how much time I had to work with, with the joint compound. So that was one plus that you, I, it took me like 30 minutes and I was pleased that even though it was drying, I was still able to manipulate the joint compound. And I'm just spreading all of the compound on the canvas right now and my palette knife. I really, really like this tool. And I'm gonna try using this and seeing if I like the notches. See, that was my plan, was just to do that. And then, of course, you start messing around and doing other stuff, and I did not like that. And um, I like the design, but the pink really got me. It just threw me off. So I really did not like the design I did. So I'm going to go ahead, and I just scraped it, moved over it, and as you can see, it's starting to get white. It's getting to be a lighter pink, but you can still manipulate the compound, which I really liked about that. That was the one thing that I did like, that, you know, it. I was able to mess with it even when it was drying still. And so the more I think about what I'm gonna do, the more I don't like what I do. And see, I liked that. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to change, you know, add some more. And then I didn't like it. I was like, ugh. I did this a couple times. And it looks okay, but the pink threw me off. I was like, what is it really going to look like? And so here I go again. I'm just, you know, messing around with sides. Trying to add some more texture. And then the more I messed with it, the more I didn't like it. Uh, messing with the different textures within the, the notch square that I used. And so I decided to scrape it. And this is what's fun about doing the texture, using the texture, uh, the compound, and even with painting, you can scrape it. If you don't like it, just scrape it. And it, you can see some parts are drying and they're, they're, not immovable so I was able to put some more down and just go from there and I enjoyed it this was therapy it, just moving the the compound on the canvas alone was just satisfying and so I just decided that you know the more I thought about what I was going to try to do never works for me I don't know about you but it never, never works for me. So even though I've got a plan in my mind, I, I don't even stick with it. Sometimes more, more than once I'll try it and then sometimes I'll just, you know, I've got to remember, don't think about what you're doing, just enjoy and have fun. And then that's when the masterpieces begin. I'm just cleaning off the, uh, the square and I'm gonna try this again. Well, let's try it again and see this time if I like it. So it moves really good, but one thing I noticed that I did change the pressure 
of how I, I put it down lightly and then in the center I started pressing down more. And so you want to try to be consistent with your pressure if all possible. And I kind of liked that. But then, you know, you start messing with it. And I'm just getting used to the compound. I'm getting used to working with the notch square. And it's okay to not like what you created. And so I kind of liked this one. And I honestly thought that this was going to be it. That I was just going to leave it. But honestly... After I looked at it, <laughs> I started, you know, looking at it and the pressures, which, you know, as I'm pointing down there, those, those look cool. I really liked it. So at this point, I was going to go ahead and call it done. I liked it, but you still don't know how it's going to look when it dries. And the more I looked at it, the more I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to mess with it anymore. And I really didn't like it. The more I looked at it, I'm washing my hands right now. But uh, the more I looked at it, the more I was just like, I don't, don't like it. So, yeah. This is what it looks like up close and like I said I honestly started the more you look at it the more you're like oh yeah this looks so cool and you can see it drying and I'm like well maybe I'll like it maybe I won't and guess what <laughs> I totally changed it I took my my knife and just started splattering it all over and I love it. I love it. I did that and I splattered all of the compound on it and I love the texture now. So this is how it dried and it wasn't chalky or anything. It did have a small bit of fumes to it, which the spackling didn't have fumes to it. It didn't have an odor, but the joint compound had a very low odor, and I it didn't bother me because I'm very sensitive to smells, and uh, that did not bother me. So that was the joint compound, and like I said again, it goes on pink. There's something on my canvas, so I'm going to open this up. I had just closed this with my hammer, so I'm doing my best to open it up with my hands so you can see now once you close it up it still stays pink it doesn't dry out which is nice because you would think that it may dry out if it is exposed to air but it doesn't it's still pink and I used only about a fourth of it on a 16 by 20 canvas so that's not bad at all I can get probably three or four more paintings out of this compound which I may use, I'm not sure yet. I haven't decided, but again, this is a 32 ounce tub. I used the 16 by 20 canvas, so it gives you an idea. And I only used, what, a fourth? A fourth of the 32 ounce, which is, what, uh, eight ounces. Eight ounces of joint compound for a 16 by 20. So that'll give you an idea of how much I used. And actually, that was double layered. So you probably, depending upon what you want to use, I am going to paint it. I have metallic silver here. And I'm not sure how I'm going to paint it, if I'm just going to dabble it on here. But I wanted to do use metallic silver. And so I also have glass. Not sure if I'm going to use that or not. And I have silver glitter. I just haven't decided what I would like to do with the canvas. I like the texture. And so um, I wanted to add something to it, but I'm not sure what. So um, I've decided to just use a little 
minimal amount of metallic paint into the center. So I'm getting my measuring tape so I can figure out what is the center. So it's right at eight. So I know where to put my paint. So I'm going to put the canvas underneath my measuring tape so I can go ahead and line up a center line of where I'm going to put my paint, where I'm going to drop it down because I would like it centered. I am using Artist Loft Metallic Paint and I'm just going to dabble a little bit of paint right in the center here. I'm not sure exactly what I want to do, but I know even if I have an idea, like I've told you before, it never works out the way that I have the idea. Um, I just go with, uh, I just take one step at a time, so I know that I wanted to put paint down. I don't want to use that. I want to use this one. I, that's my favorite palette knife that I use. And I'm just going to go in both directions. And I didn't put my hair up, so I keep on having to put my hair back so it doesn't get in the paint. And I'm just brushing the paint up and down. And this again is metallic silver. looks better than I thought it did. So I take this step by step. Even though I might have a design in mind, I try my best not to concentrate on what I want it to look like because then I, you get yourself worked up when it doesn't come out the way that you have envisioned it. So I take each step by step and just go with it. And that way you're not disappointing yourself for one and you're just relaxing and enjoying the artistry in itself. Um, when I was in the hospital, you know, that was one big thing when I was introduced to painting in the hospital because I always wanted to paint. I always wanted to learn how to paint or actually learn how to do pottery. I wanted to take pottery classes and then I got sick. So that's what I have right now. And every time I tried to say, oh, I'm going to do this or that, it never worked out. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do right now if I'm going to keep this. But look what I decided to do. I added glass to it. It turned out really, really cool. So thank you for sharing this time with me. And here's just an up close of the texture. And like I said, when I was in the hospital, when you start thinking of what you're gonna do, you just don't end up doing it. So you just have to move forward and just go with the flow and just relax and enjoy the, the painting process and this was not what I had intended and it turned out a masterpiece. Thank you for coming on this journey with me on exploring textured art and remember to watch these two videos here next 
and make sure enjoy the process of art, relax and have fun. Until next time.